It is repetition which makes for perfection. That woman. On stream. Why not? Okay. Head too big already. Like how much do I want to commit to? I was going to do a headshot, but then... I kind of want the bat symbol in there, so... Can you guys see this? I think you can. Three of us will be there. All three of them, all four of us will be there, so that's kind of exciting. Uh, uh, so it's going to be... Um, Kate Kane from the comics. And... Okay, so this is a what they call a pencil lead holder. It literally is a holder of pencil lead. So instead of having a normal like wooden pencil with lead in the middle that you basically shave away the wood to get to the lead, this has a stick of lead inside like this. And you buy the sticks of lead and it goes inside this thing. You squeeze, uh, push it down here and it goes in. All right. What I like about this is it's super blunt, meaning it's not pointy. You can get a pencil sharpener for this, but I, I don't really use it. I used to use it, but I don't. I, I, what I like about a blunt tip is that it makes you very relaxed. <laughs> now, what it allows you to do is just kind of freely sketch without committing to a line, like a sharp line. It does, doesn't dig into the paper, because sometimes if you get a sharp pencil and you dig into paper, it creates an actual physical groove. When you start inking it, the ink will go into that groove. Bad things happen. Um, and sometimes in the original, you can look and you can actually see the original drawing that was literally etched into the paper. And uh, so, so I, I do this because it allows me to just really focus on the gesture, the shapes, the energy. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. The energy. Okay. Uh, so here's the neck. The line, the midline, right, goes down the nose, um, whatever that is, again, I always forget, um, the chin, Adam's apple, down to the clavicle, down to the midpoint of the sternum. So the sternum goes down here, and then the belly button is here. The belly button support tissue goes around there. Um, okay. shoulder, arm. I kind of like wide shoulders on both my male and female figures. It just has a nicer silhouette. And hmm. My arms are cut off, which is fine because she's brooding. So let's go ahead and put the mask on her. I forgive you. Okay. We're all God's children. I forgive you. Okay. Uh, and then, only then, do I add sort of secondary features like um, the breasts. And then, only then, do I start sort of breaking down like the ribcage shape here. I believe so. Like. And then the other thing you can do with this is that it's such a wide, uh, blunt tip that you can, uh, you know, even do some shadowing and stuff like that. Um, with my sketches, I tend to leave the pencils pretty much in there because I like to have those gray values that differentiates it, I think, from like the fully finished professional work I do for covers and whatnot. Anyway, so here comes the hair. Zeb Francis 832, welcome in. It's my first, you know what? This literally, I've forgotten how to stream, so it's like we're both streaming for the first time ever. And then does she have a belt? I feel like she has a belt. And 
I will Google, but I'm pretty sure she has a belt. Has a kind of like a wider, more old fashioned buckle. And well, you know, um, I'm not one for telling 500 people what to do creatively. The thing is, doubt serves actually a very good function, which is it makes you question things. And when you're drawing, especially when you're learning, uh, it's all about, okay, did I draw that correctly? Does Is there a possible better pose? That's doubt, right? Like, is there something wrong with this, this eyebrow? Are the lips too plump? Like, that's doubt. So doubt is like an internal head in your voice, which acts sort of as an artistic editor, corrector of things. Too much doubt, and you can, you'll can you never finish anything. You'll, like those sketches I showed you, you know, you'll start a sketch and then crumple it or toss it aside and start new and never get anywhere. Uh, but too little doubt, and you're just like, uh, you're uncoachable, and you're drawing things that are have all sorts of mistakes, and you're not listening to anyone, and you're not getting in better. So doubt is your friend. You just need to be able to you want to hang around with it so that it's helpful and not oppressive. So you just invite doubt over every couple, two or three days. So every time it feels a little special, not like something, someone that's like a hanger on or a leech, right? You do you, I'll do me. I guess with the NFT, you can, you can sell art and make money or make prints off of art, but just sold uh, there was a, I prefer drawing on paper. I like, I like hearing the, this. I like being able to do this. I like uh, being able to take this with me to a hotel room and finishing it. I like uh, being able to gift this to someone and, and knowing that it's the only thing of its kind. If I'm gonna ink myself, this is about as far as I go with the pencils, right? It's all structured, but got it. Instead of these things, it goes like this. Perfect. More like a mask structure. It's like, like almost like Kevlar. Or like the Michael Keaton Batman mask. Here's Command Z for you. All right. Oh, you mean go back to something that you had before? It's all in here. I got I got layers and layers and layers in my head. Trademark and the copyrights owned by the publisher, the company that owns the characters. Uh, they bequeath the, the original art back, and so I have that one piece of original to sell. And back in the day, it was a relatively X-Men 268, uh, as far as I can tell. So it remains to be seen, kind of. Uh, but that, I, I, look, I don't draw on paper for that reason. I, it's just I've been doing this for my entire life. like, And I, do, I can draw digitally, but um, at this point... Um, I can always tell when someone draws digitally, for the most part. Uh, you can see there tends to be a little bit of a sterileness um, to the line. It just doesn't have like this, right? This, I don't know, it's uh, the line. And you can build it in. I've seen tips or tools or brushes or whatever. So it's getting better and better, but I can tell. But there's stuff you can do digitally that you can't do on paper. So um, again, it's just it's kind of like, what is your style and what do you want it to be? All right, so right there, if I were drawing digitally, I would just liquefy and elongate it. But I didn't want there to be too much room between the nose and her upper lip. So I just brought this down. Oh boy. What a crazy week, and it has been, with all the news and everything, it's just really hard to stay focused, but I will leave this out. We are here to talk about art.
Yeah, it, it kind of boggles the mind, like, the market, I guess, for the work I do, you know. Anyway, if I could go back in time, I would buy as much original combo card as possible. Uh, you know, people are like, well, I'll go back in time and bet on the World Series winners. Uh, you know, too much to remember. Just go back and buy original combo card, no matter what year you go back to, whether it's 1940, 1960... 1990, buy it all, sit on it, and then break it in. Streaming advice to all you time travelers out there. Go back and buy actual number one mint condition. Yeah. Whereas if you buy original art, there's still only one covered X-Men 268, etc. You know what? But just go ahead and buy key Silver Age, Golden Age books and original art. Why not? Since we're going back in time, we can do whatever we want. I noticed that the neck was a little long, and so you can see I just like brought it up a little bit. So those are the kind of corrections I do while I'm making. Go get those uh, tulips. Sell at the right time. You're 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 looking good. Okay. All right, so with the hair, uh, as you can see, I just really kind of did the shape here. It's really about, uh, it's curly, so it's about, I'm not gonna draw every strand, I'm doing clumps of strands, and I'm creating an undulating kind of, uh, I want it to feel three-dimensional, so it's undulating. One of the things I wanted to do when we were publishing the Hanna-Barbera comic books was, uh, you know, we did a, uh, was it Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor? They did, uh, they did the Flintstones, I believe, and I, and I was working on Scooby-Doo, and uh, had this idea, which is like, all those cartoons, whether it was Jetsons, Flintstones, Scooby-Doo, and it would sort of be like Days of Future Past, and uh, Jane would have to go back in time, take over Daphne's body, and try to avert this hor horrific future that was going to happen. <laughs> it's of course, of course. <laughs> Guys, uh... Red Wings Guy 19. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do a, a silent auction for this and then um, for people in stream and uh, and then I'll, I'll donate the money. All, all the all the Aussie monies will go to a charity. Something in, 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 in that. We never got to that storyline, but. <laughs> Pookip, 20 minutes left, better speed it up. I'm not gonna finish this on stream. So maybe I'll, you know what? Well, uh, in that, I don't have my ink and brush here with me. I mean, they're here in the house somewhere. I have to find them. I literally just ran upstairs uh, after I got home and started plugging in devices and just prayed and hoped that they would start working. So maybe this one we'll do as a silent auction, but in the Discord channel. I mean, you can put a bid in. I, you know, you can, you've seen my sketches before, or you can wait and, and check it out in Discord. Uh, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, Discord is a online communication. I don't know communicate is it really a community platform I don't know uh, it basically live streams and um, maybe we'll just create a channel there for people to bid we're gonna pop it on eBay I don't know I, I kind of want to reward the folks that are here I know a lot of you guys are art enthusiasts collectors and um, approximate value I'm happy in that I have not streamed a long time and I definitely want to 
help reward the folks that uh, are showing up. So even as I'm inking and doing these kinds of things, I'm mentally thinking, all right, black shape or uh, shadow is going to go there and here, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So like in my head, I'm inking it uh, with a brush, mentally making little notes, um, knowing what I'm going to do as I go forward. All right, I'll give myself 20 minutes. You know, maybe I can finish this. I don't know. It's a fairly simple sketch. It's going to be a lot of technique. Tell not it. So we're going to pop the metal above here a little bit. And in my head, I'm going, I'm going to take a dry brush with a dry brush here and just like smear it down to create kind of a metallic texture. Kind of a leathery uh, costume. All right, it's not spandex. And so, um, hence the wrinkles. And when I ink around that, it'll give it a nice kind of faux. Uh, kind of texture or leathery texture look to it. Extend these lines out. Uh, that's pretty advanced. I can't explain why I did that other than having these render lines be the same width made it look like this breast kind of went up and across and I wanted to be more teardrop shapes so these lines get wider up to the top and, and, and less wide towards the bottom of the tier. Alright, and then here I'm just going to make it more of a This is the belt, tilted this way. Maybe you can see the ink come out of the... For those of you who have joined us late, I will be in Denver, Denver Fanton. Rose City Comic Con, San Diego, New York Comic Con. I've got some exciting ones already planned for next year as well. I've got to make up for lost time. We lost two years. Two years of giving away free sketches at panels. imagine velcro would be loud but just wearing a cape is loud you can't move around with the cape on and be quiet in my opinion so there's a certain amount of suspension of disbelief that goes on with the world of superheroes right yes the wrinkles where the costume may bunch up. And let's come down here.
I think of kind of where the highlights are going to be on the mask. And if you're asking, well, how do I know where the highlights are going to be? Pull out a photograph of like any of like the Keaton mask, the Nolan mask, any of the masks, Ben Affleck, and just look at look at where the sh the shine is, right? And then try to squint and see if you can see the shapes. Well, those are the kinds of shapes I'm, I'm basically capturing here, right? So like I elongated this nose. I'm gonna use white out to basically fix that, right? So I I see my I packed all that stuff with me to uh, Dallas. I have not unpacked that that uh, backpack. I'm thinking it might still be there. Maybe not. It's 5:07. I don't think I'm gonna get to it. Um, And uh, I will finish this in the next stream. I'll still be able to raise the money and I'll actually have the charity for you. Or instead of a brush, you could literally just do what I'm doing here, which is um, sort of cross hatching and rendering to kind of bring out the, uh, the texture of the, of, the, of the black shapes here, right? So. All right, so here's a shadow of the f sort of the brow, right? Light's coming down this way. This brow is basically casting a shadow along this note. So that's what that is. That shadow there is right, like, see that line? No. See that line there, right? So that line there, that's a shadow there. And so there's one over here too, right? And so I can fix that nose because it's bugging me. It is by instinct, unfortunately. I, I don't have a good answer for that. Um, sometimes, like going into a piece, I go, okay, this one I'm going to not really cross hatch much. It's going to be more straightforward, black and white, pure contrast, you know? Um, or I'm going to do more dry brush effects. Sometimes it's just what I, what tools I have on me. So I've, you know, this is a zero three marker. I can ink this whole piece with just this marker, but that would dictate, you know, what I cross hatch, what I don't, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's part of the equation too. Just being completely honest here. I'm gonna just fix this because it bugs me. Oop. I'm just gonna lay it kind of flat. Uh, get some more pink in there. And uh, I like this brush a lot. Let's give me a nice line here. And uh, let's just... We have an hour, so I'm thinking we'll get this done. This isn't watercolor paper. This is uh, a smooth uh, plate finish, so the water will t the the uh, the paint will take a little longer to dry. As so it kind of tends to sit up on top of the smooth um, finish of the paper, it's not super absorbent. But I already like kind of the effect. It really makes it pop and make it makes it look a little different from like a typical black and white sketch because it really isn't black and white. Okay.
Let's go in here. How many of you are going to be at Denver? Did I ask this before? I was curious. Or how many people are going to Miami? You know, with the advent of conventions, it would be great to uh, do some meetups again. That said, I just read an article today about yet a fifth wave. Like, oh my gosh, will this never end? I mean, apparently not. It's pretty sad. Okay, let's um, add a little more red in here. I can I have to wipe that out. Okay. The color portion, what we're trying to do. Good there. Maybe I'll just do another coat just to make it a little more opaque. On the screen, it looks a little warmer, although it's kind of dark in this room. My eyes are getting darker. It's yeah, you do this for. I've been in comics for 34 years. I've been slinging ink and drawing for 34 years. Put some ink here. This is probably not the way to do it. I'm teaching a very bad habit in that I think people will see this and go, okay, this is how I ink. I'm going to put ink on my drawing and then move it around. And if you do that without having drawn, I don't know, 25,000 hours, you're gonna learn something very quick, <laughs> which is that uh, you need to practice. But oh, I guess I could put the ink in the thimble, which I'll do right now. But uh, if I'm working on a flat surface like I am now, I I don't have issues with just like laying it down. Okay. And this is like the broad areas. I'm not really worrying about the dry brush, although I've got a nice little effect there. All right. Now I feel like this is dried out a bit, so I can go in and basically, uh, here's a two shower on dry brush and just kind of run along the edge. And see how that kind of creates a nice highlight, but also creates a texture. Probably not the best for the environment. So you can reuse your plastic bottles. So this is where happy accidents really uh, pay off because we're trying to create spontaneity, a random, a ran randomness to it all. This is the shadow of the buckle, shadow of the goals. And now I'm going to dry the brush out a little bit here. Just keep 
working it until I get something. There we go. Okay. You're, kind of, you're almost like pushing the ink at this point. That's how it feels to me. It's less about flowing across the page and, and more almost about kind of pushing that ink to do your bidding. And you'll find that you get quite a bit of um, mileage out of a dry brush. You think like, oh, this, how can there be more, more ink on there? But see how kind of like a little shovel, I'm pushing it against the, the grain. Not against the grain. I'm not pulling it. I'm pushing it. But all it's really doing is creating a nice transition between the pure black areas and creating a nice mid-tier gray. If that makes sense. Let's go ahead and see that was nice. Um, so you get progressively lighter and lighter grays. And you want to go with the, the grain of the costume. So the wrinkles are going to be more horizontal than vertical. Okay. And uh, let's... Okay. Now I've run out of ink. Now I can reload it up. It's got a lot of ink in there, and I can add sort of the pure black areas again. And then I did say these gauntlets, they're metallic, so when I get some dry brush in there again, uh, you'll see what I do. I think typically in a sketch, you would pencil everything. So I would have penciled all these like dark areas, but I'm, I'm really just kind of doing it from memory, kind of like if I were inking myself, or penciling myself, what would it look like? Intertwined somehow. Okay. Now with this, I've really, like normally the ink, the angle of the brush is high. You can also drag it on the side, like this. It's almost like the brush is kind of parallel to the paper. See that effect there? I'm having a hard time seeing this. I'm going to have to get some glasses out. It's another thing. I can't, <coughs> can't open things and I can't see things. I can see. see uh... More dry brush in the um, cape. Recognizing that they're highlights up here. All right. And I think I was going to add some black areas in here. Even after a couple of days, I've kind of forgotten. Like, as I was drawing in my head, I was like, okay, this area is going to be white, this area is going to be black, blah, 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 blah. Oh, I forgot. So see how that's like a medium gray? Oh, <laughs> that was not intent. See how that's a medium gray? I can't, I can't. Depth perception has definitely gone away. So I'm gonna add a core black there. I'm gonna fix this. Just do a drop shadow. Easy fix. And uh, let's 
increase the values, the contrast of the values. Everything was very gray because I was just basically putting in the shadows using a marker. So kind of dark going to light. Some kind of playful shadows or highlights there. Very playful. I don't know what that means. Okay, and the goal is to make sure that these random black blob shapes are not, they don't look like, they should not look like um, brush strokes on paper. The goal is to make the strokes look like reality, like it's texture, like the black shapes are creating form, right, volume, weight. All these like nice artistic terms. If you know, you know. But you can fake it. Just use those words. Form, weight, shape. Someone shows you their work and says, hey, what do you think? Like, what do you think of the sketch? You're like, oh, I really love the form. The weight is really nice. The line's very playful. I'll be like, wow, that's deep. Let's make this, make the highlight right. That's the worst. I hate like covering up my all the work I did with the marker. And that's like, in my mind, a lot of times I do a cover and I have in my head that it's gonna have all these black shapes and then I put all the lines down, the rendering, and then I, I feel like I don't wanna waste the work I've done, which is stupid. Um, so, in it, like right there, like basically, spent time putting all those parallel lines and then it's like I obliterated them and um, that's what you need that little bit of fearlessness to kind of push you through and create something that you're maybe you're hesitant because at the end of the day the viewer the reader the consumer the fan they don't see what you covered up they just see the final result so only you know what you've obliterated and so is that really the way we should gauge our artistic decisions like I've already done that work I don't want to lose it and no one knows that you put it in so let it go this is where I would start singing All right. now if you see there's like a nice balance of um, sort of black shapes white shapes gray shapes I'm just sort of balancing it throughout the entire piece Right. I hope you guys have the song playing in your head now that I've mentioned it. Okay. Bless you, Jackson. Can you hear the key tapping? Tap, tap, tap. My son's playing video games next next to me. Okay. All right. And that's. Uh, how do I know when I'm done? Well, today I'm going to be done in 30 minutes, regardless. So that's one way. But if you didn't have time, if you didn't have a deadline, how do you know? That's a very uh, interesting philosophical question for me. And the answer is you just know, right? But how do you know? This is where your style kicks in, right? Have you seen like art sometimes like it's over rendered, or too dark or too light, or too cartoony? All these things that don't resonate with us, but they do resonate with the, the person that created the art because they're like going, oh, this is great. I love all these shadows. All right, this is great. It's so cartoony. It's so vibrant. It's so playful. That's an expression of whatever's in here, like your personal, just like the clothes you wear, you know, the behavior you have. Like the, these are all sort of things that are deeply rooted in, in us. And that's why I think art is so personal even if the style is very commercial or uh, you know, derivative, 
at some point you still have to decide when am I when when am I done? Is this right? And I would say if you're doing a derivative style, you're probably looking at someone else's work and say, okay, the closer it looks like this derivative style that or the closer it emulates what I'm trying to achieve, that's when you know to stop. So it's not a personal decision, it's a decision based off someone else's personal decision, right? Um That's good. That someone mathematically figured it out, right? The uh, Hamilton's awesome. I like them all. Leclerc, Leclerc, che Checo. Is that Checo? I, I like them all. I like them all. Daniel Ric Ricardo. I'm mangling it. I should know. I know a little. It's mind-boggling. What a crazy job that is. Some of us draw for a living, some of us drive super fast and risk our lives. Okay, let's um beef up some of these lines here so I'm gonna go for it Let's see what happens line weights are super important in drawing you could do something that's flat like I like I had it but you are if you if you're seeing like when I go in and, and beef up some of these lines with this brush um, forms shapes start um, popping feeling more three-dimensional Hey Jim, why is that use a brush sometimes for inking? Uh, it's in my hand and it's convenient. I could have done all those thicker lines with a, a marker, which I will do in a bit, just to clean them up a bit. All right, but this is a eight, you know, whatever these microns. It's the thickest one you can get. So I'm just gonna clean up these lines. I, it, it's all blurry to me at this point, so. I'm assuming that the lines are not super crisp. Uh, okay. I'm going to add uh, a background so these lines will essentially kind of, these weights will just kind of blend into the background. You'll see. We're walking to dinner. Huh? We're oh. walking to dinner. Right now? Yes. Okay. Okay. Tell me about Hungry crowd. I was there like five. Like you were there for brunch. <sighs> Give me a minute. Okay, I'll go downstairs. Me and Mom are going to be waiting for you. What? Me and Mom are going to be waiting for you. Yeah, I should go, Jackie. Okay. Okay. I'm adding some um, marker lines to make the hair feel more volumetric. I've never seen that. I, I, I'll have to check. Um, I'll have to check Amazon. I don't know what I would do with that. I use those occasionally.
So there's going to be more uh, sort of these black, thick shadows that I'm putting in the hair towards the bottom. And, and the reason why is that it gets heavier near the bottom. Although that, I know, it makes sense, right? So if you have like a big pile of cotton candy, it's lightest at the top and the weight is at the bottom. So same thing with a big pile of poofy hair. So that shadows are going to be darker. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm going with it. All right, you can see that. All right, so you can liberally throw in uh, more dark shapes at that point. Don't make them parallel like I did there. Asymmetry is your friend when it comes to adding shadows into hair. Asymmetric patterns. Chaos theory. Right? So there's wisps, arcs that are consistent, but you can't do them super regularly because then it looks fake. Almost like it was cloned. Right? Cut and pasted. Just moving very, very quickly. Lines slightly apart. It's kind of like uh, when you see a chef like slice and dice an onion or something. This is the equivalent. It's like, and I'm, I'm basically now creating middle grays, right? I've got the white highlights. I've created the pure black areas. And now I'm, I'm adding middle grays. What I call the middle grays. So let's just go ahead and darken it all the way down here, darken this over here, darken this area in here. So you still see a highlight, it's just not as hot, right? And hot means pure white. See how that black area and white uh, sort of gray area, like it doesn't blend as well, so I'm just going to go in and blend it a little bit better. Sort of darken it as it comes down the form a bit. go in and another quick way of doing it is just laying down sort of the this is a, also a middle gray right so the white areas are going to be the rim light on the sides and the nice thing about doing it with pencil is that if I don't like kind of where the highlights are, I can always erase the highlights back in. All right. I also uh, like pencil lines, it adds a lot of energy to the piece. It's even a lighter gray, very light gray shadow across the face. VZA in the house. Welcome in. It's been a while. Good to see you. Well, we'll find out. Okay. 
thing is you can't do it too long. See what happens if you do it too long. The paper starts breaking up and then you get dark areas, light areas. I want to have a pretty flat, consistent nub, tissue nub. All right. And you move up and down and you can kind of move it sideways, cir circular, if you want to get something a little smoother in terms of transition. I don't know how I'm going to do the red back into the areas that, you know, it's, it's one thing to do with white out, but I'll figure it out later. Okay. Let's do this. I think I have to, like, I think the toilet paper gives me a nicer gradation, to be honest. But, you know, whatever. All right. Uh, this is a red Sharpie. It's, it's got the ink. I think it will go over the black. Look at that. Is it working? I should have grabbed some glasses when I was had the chance, but all right. So that's one way of doing it, but you can see it's already fading into the, uh, the black. So let's try this. What happens if I use white? Okay. So it heat, it's drying. So there's the base. And now I go back in with this. Although I'll let it dry, I'll let it dry. So just white out and cleaning up the edges. This will pop her off uh, the uh, background clean up some of the stuff I was doing. Create some wrinkles. Alright. Create a little bit of a highlight there. That. The ears don't line up in terms of height, so I'm going to just add a little bit there. Okay, now let's see if this red Sharpie will go over that marker. It does. Okay. So, knowing that, I can go ahead and Clean up these edges. Okay. Although a little bit of white highlight is a good thing. So let's. The highlights will go on top of a curved surface, not exactly in the middle, maybe three fourths off the apex. Meaning, if there's a circular, if there's a cylinder, you can put a white highlight at the very top, but typically. It's more off to the side. It's a reflection of light sources off to the side. So think of this hair as a cylinder. So the highlight's going to kind of go across the top like that. All right, maybe there might be some over here. A little goes a long way. Don't, don't overdo it like I do. OK. And let's, let's do that. And let's clean up. Let's add a couple wrinkle lines here like that. And again, how many of these do? Hard to say. You know, I do like the just the white on the edge. I don't know if I'm going to put red back in. So let's just do this. Let's see what happens if I take this idea continue it through. Got five minutes. Okay. And then we'll just do a little highlight here. Put pencil over here so I, I feel obligated to put some pencil over here. And then do a drop shadow of this cape, which will help kind of push the torso out a bit. And a shadow. Okay. About 
four minutes here. Let's just clean up some of the tips. And lastly, I'm just going to spackle like some background, almost like it's rain or something. I just need something with a little bit of bounce, a little bit of bounce. And we're going to load up some ink and we're going to just... So it makes the black area look like clouds with rain in it as opposed to, or snow, as opposed to just sort of smear ink on the back. Just adds like visual dimension an interest, texture, depth, uh, I don't know what else you want to call it. It visually distracts the eye in a pleasing way. Ooh, that was a big drop. Okay. And because the suit's reflective, I do like the idea of it a little bit on the shoulders. Okay. Let's just add a couple more ourselves. Alright, put my signature here. 